Um, W bugs right. Okay, I got another video. Um, we all have preconceived privacy. You know, we're all about. You know, one of the actually one of the reasons is that Windows is just so hard. I mean, when it, Windows is just so shit. Like so shit with the privacy. Same with um. Apple's not as bad, but you know, Linux, it's all, it's all false. It's all false. I think you guys know that. So, um, but let's see, like, let's see how bad it really is. Um, setting up a local server isn't that hard. Never said it notions hard. about the privacy of various desktop operating systems. Windows is generally considered as a nightmare. Mac OS has a self-built reputation on privacy that might be undeserved. And Linux is generally viewed as the most private operating system. But we don't really have any real data on what these operating systems collect oh, and what they do with it. So today we're gonna take a look at Windows, Mac OS and various Linux distros and see what data they collect, where it goes. All right. Skip the sponsor. And we're going to start with Windows because it's the most used desktop operating system in the world. So if desktop? you've installed Windows 11 recently, you're familiar with the very lengthy setup process where you can uncheck a lot of toggles to try and limit crazy, what the operating system collects. All of this is labeled as telemetry, which is a general term that should mean info that we can use to make sure we focus on improving what actually matters yeah. to our users but is now more generally used to avoid saying personal data collection. And to be clear, not all telemetry is bad. The data you voluntarily send to KDE or to GNOME is not personal data. It's good telemetry that's optional. So for Windows, even if you- Um, I haven't really used Popper. Oh, so how's it going? Aditya, Aditya, see, see, she, how's it going, Aditya? Um, what do I think of Pop OS? I actually have not, never used it. I've never used it. Um, it's, it's, I think it's good for like normies though. Like, honestly, like it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It, like, if you like how it looks and download it, it really doesn't matter. Like, they're all the same. You know, if you haven't seen my video, um, I have a video about why like the Linux distribution, like it doesn't really matter. So just, just choose, like, if you like it, go for it, mate. But doesn't really matter, they're all the same. Except like maybe maybe Gen 2, like Gen 2 is a little bit different. But. Uncheck everything. You still have to agree to send- I mean, obviously they have their own quirks and stuff, but it's all And the required telemetry data to Microsoft. You can't entirely disable it unless you do it through a script and this can introduce compatibility problems. Now what the OS will collect is the following. First, Microsoft Store Logs, which will let Microsoft know what you installed, updated, what downloads you started, what downloads you suspended, and resumed. This okay. data will be associated with your Microsoft account. The second is network data. You'll send the speed of your network adapter, as well as the IMEI number and the mobile operator if you're using a cellular network. Third, hardware information, as in the amount of RAM, storage, the speed of your CPU, the battery capacity, and the like. Fourth, accessory data. You'll send the complete list of devices you have connected to your computer, like printers, controllers, USB sticks, gaming or streaming accessories, and the like. Fifth is application-related data. So for each app, Microsoft will know the total time you ran it, the CPU cycles attributed to it, and the number of crashes. And sixth is event metrics. These are just various logs of what happened on your system. Yep. Or imagine having to like, you know, you set up Windows and then you have to log into an online account, bro. It's just the so... most nebulous category. So that's it's just so sticky, a bro. lot. Oh. It's literally just like not how, like, I just remember when I was a kid, like, you just create an account. Data. And that's if you unchecked like everything else. If you left everything enabled, you're going to send a lot more. You'll send inking and typing data. So metrics of what you typed or wrote with your stylus. Oh, okay. You'll also I was going to say, like, what you typed? That's crazy, and bro. And speech recognition data, like what you said to Cortana, for example. There's also the activity history, so every document you opened, every website you visited, and the like. And fortunately, all these things can be disabled, unless you're in the insider program, in which case you have to have telemetry enabled all the way to stay in the program. But that's just yeah. what Microsoft tells you about if you read their privacy policy. 
Because if you run a connection analysis tool on a default fresh vanilla window. Bro, I used this at uni. This is Wireshark. Install without any. Bro, this makes you feel like a hacker. Like a full, I had like a full like assignment exam thing. This was like, this is fun. It was fun. Additional software, you'll find a few more things. Recently, a YouTuber called the PC Security Channel analyzed a completely fresh Windows install, an ISO straight from Microsoft's website. They used Wireshark. And what they found was that Windows makes a few connections. How's it going, Vishnu M? ...to third parties it never really told you about. I left a link to their full video in the description below if you want to check everything they found. But basically, there's a direct connection to a website owned by McAfee called trustsource.com. This is on a bog standard Windows install, no manufacturer bloatware and no McAfee installed either. Then there's a request to scorecardresearch.com, which is an internet trends research company, part of Comscore. Windows 11 also pings Bing and MSN.com, even though you didn't even open a web browser yet. And finally, there's oh, a request to privacyportal.onetrust.com. Microsoft probably subcontracts data treatment. Bro, what, what browser is that? Is that Windows Edge? ...to this company to comply... It looks, it looks like Safari. Right? ...with various privacy regulations around the world, or they use this software to manage user data. And it's a lot of crap. Yeah, I'm doing great, Vishnu. Thanks for asking. Honestly, Jerusalem, I know what you're talking about. It's, um... It, yeah, like, every laptop has to have a webcam connected at all, like, all the time. Any laptop that's, like, using Windows. ...on a very vanilla install with... Like, if you bought a laptop and then you disabled the camera, like, physically, then your Windows would not work or something like that. No programs Correct installed wrong. whatsoever. These are Crazy. all third parties. They should not be here. Same with, I think you can't have like fast boot turned off and just like, oh no, all these, and you have to have like a chip in your computer if you don't have that chip. And that chip like enables you to something with telemetry. Or Bro, at the I very least, Microsoft so long. should tell. Last time I logged into Windows was like, like literally like maybe like almost a year ago. Almost a year ago. Tell you that they contact them before they do. Oh, every now and then. Every now and then I'll go on like, I'll go on like omi.tv or something like that. So what exactly can Microsoft do with all this data? Well, they have more than enough to completely fingerprint your device. With the hardware data you can't disable, coupled with the network data, they can reliably identify you on the internet, which means advertisers that use Microsoft's Damn. network also can. Yeah, secure boot Second, and TPM. They that's can reliably was. tell what you use in terms of apps and what type of content you watch online or create using various applications. Third, it means Microsoft sort of has a key logger on your computer if you enabled inking and what? typing data. They know exactly what you typed or wrote and use that to suggest relevant words if need be. That's and finally, crazy. it means Windows crazy, sends bro, some like... data to third parties without it being explicitly mentioned in the setup process at all. So, yeah, for privacy, a vanilla Windows install is really, really bad. It's not a preconceived notion. It's facts. Fortunately, you can disable all the optional stuff straight from the settings. You can go to the privacy yeah. and security options and go into each category. But, like, how do you know it actually turns it off? You know what, that's what I'm saying, like... That's what they say. How are you gonna check? There's like very little, like maybe it does turn it off, but there's no way. Like, you know, like maybe if you could check the code. Oh, wait. Proprietary. Category. That's all I gotta say. Disable everything there. Now, for the required telemetry, you'll have to get your hands dirty. Guys, don't worry. It's, it's, it's to help them with Windows products and they need your help. Enterprise. <laughs> They just need all your data. ...version of Windows, in which case you can elect to not send anything to Microsoft. If you use a non-enterprise version, like Windows 11 Home, you can also completely disable the telemetry service. No you need way. to hit Windows plus R, and in the Run dialog, type services.msc, then Enter. In there, look for something called Connected User Experiences and Telemetry. You can double click that and in the general tab of the properties window that appears, you can set startup type to disabled, which means on the next reboot, this service won't start and you won't send anything to Microsoft. Now let's talk about macOS Maybe. because Apple Maybe. talks a big game when it comes to privacy, but is it actually true? 
out of the box, macOS does collect a lot of stuff. Oh shit. Yeah, I was actually curious. Like, I actually don't know, like, how, how good is macOS? Like, obviously it's gonna collect stuff, but like, I swear they're better. Like. By default, they'll send to Apple your IP address, location, and some usage patterns, like all the apps you run and when you run them. And in Big Sur at least, these requests were sent unencrypted, which means that anyone who's on Bomba Bro, unencrypted? Bomba the same club. network as you can read them and use them, <laughs> including your internet service provider and anyone they send data to. Bro. So, the government as well. Now, hopefully, in later How's it going? versions, they fit. How's it going, Di Dicey? D3C? Paying a hundred dollars for Windows just to get tracked everywhere. Fix that. No one's talking so about saying, it anymore, Come so one side. can hope that yeah. Come it's to fixed. Linux. Telemetry data out of the box includes browsing history, search history, crash data, performance and diagnostic data, location information, health information. If you use that on an iPhone, for example, and you see and this, ads, bro. all That's the info great. you entered in your Apple ID, the device serial wait, number, wait, facts. What? Fortunately, you can disable no, no, no. oh, no. a non. -M which means that any internet so one can hope that, yeah, it's fixed. Telemetry data out of the box includes browsing history, search history, crash data, performance and diagnostic data, location information, health information, if you use that on an iPhone, for example, and you sync it, all the info you entered in your app. They're gonna know how tall you are, how much you weigh, bro. They're gonna know how much, f bro. They're gonna know how lazy you are. They're gonna see like, oh, bro, this guy doesn't even go for a run. Full ID, Yo. the device serial number, some payment information, if you entered a payment method, everything you yeah, bought two, using that Apple ID, now, though, and potentially knows. even your government ID, year, if that is required where you live to set up your account. All Spotlight search queries are also logged and sent to Apple. Everything you do on Apple's websites is also collected and logged if you are connected using your Apple ID. And if you use Safari, all your browsing data, browsing cache, download history, and login credentials are collected as well and linked to your Apple ID. And if you use Siri, you will also send to Apple the audio recordings of what you told that little Yo. useless piece of software. Audio recordings? Bro, that's crazy. That's crazy. The only alternative to the iPhone or Huawei, but you first need to remove every bloatware manually. Yeah, but then aren't you just like... Aren't you using, like, the Chinese version of Apple? They're just, like, you know, like, aren't they, like, isn't it just the CCP instead, instead of Steve Jobs or who's the guy, Tim Cook? Now, fortunately, Mac OS... Isn't Huawei phones, like, banned everywhere? Like, I don't know, I, I don't know if you can even get it, at least here in Australia, I don't know this if you can get it. This lets you disable virtually everything from the system settings. You can just head over to the settings in the security and privacy page and going all the way to the bottom, you can click on analytics and improvements and uncheck everything. You can also go to Apple advertising and uncheck personalized ads here. You'll still see ads in the Mac app store, but at least- Okay, here's, okay, here's the thing. This is what I thought about with Siri. Okay. I'm just thinking about it like programming. To check, like, okay, let's say, you know, you activate Siri by saying, hey Siri, then to check for that, there needs to be kind of like a, like an if statement kind of in the program that's checking it. Like every now and then that's like, did someone say, hey Siri, like let's say every second. That means they have to be constantly listening. Like, just think about it. It's like, unless you just turn it on when you want to, if you got, hey Siri, that means they always, they always have to be listening for that. Hey Siri. And then maybe you could say, well, they're listening, but then they're only recording after that. It's still like, they're still listening. It's closed software. You don't know where the information is going. So I feel like, I feel like phones, especially if you've got Hey Siri on iPhones, they're probably listening to you uh, constantly. And I've got one, so, but I don't have it turned on, but it's probably still listening to me. At least they won't use your data to target you. In the location services, you can also make sure only the apps that really need access can get it. In general, it's a good idea to review permissions for each app and making sure they don't have access to your mic, screen recording or location if you don't feel like they need to. Now this won't remove all the data that is sent to Apple. Some checks are made when you boot up your Mac and that data is sent to Apple automatically. And these checks were made unencrypted before, but hopefully they're fixed now. So how bad is it? What does Apple do with all of this? I'd... Yeah, 
I'd have to I'd have to end stream and then restream. I'll do it for next time. I'll do it for next time. Well, Apple say they mostly use this data to power and improve their services for data analysis, but they also use it to create a profile of your usage of your Mac and link that to the data on your iPhone, iPad or Apple Watch if you own these as well. With that profile, they will target you with ads on their various stores and the relevant data is shared with third parties that Apple uses to subcontract some of their services, like for example the Apple Card. It's handled by an external bank which will get access to all your payment data. So yeah, out of the box with everything checked, macOS is just as bad as Windows 11 is. Bro, I was wrong. Except was wrong. it's actually easier actually wrong. to disable mostly everything and also it doesn't check in with third parties without telling you. Now, how about Linux? Well, Linux based operating systems do not It's a home run boys. Collect it is any a home data run. out of the box with a few exceptions. Now, I should probably say Linux distributions don't collect any data because Android is Linux based and definitely collects a lot of data. So let's just talk about Linux distros. The first one is Ubuntu, who will collect telemetry data out of the box with no personal information at all. It's just hardware data. Bugs riders, bug riders in Ubuntu. Yeah, but it could still be used to fingerprint your device. Canonical doesn't currently have any ad server that I know about, so they probably only really use this to know what their users actually use and focus their efforts on that. But if you're uncomfortable with that, you can disable it at install. It would be much better if it was... And at least you can actually know that it's disabled. There's a way to check, you know, there's, there's someone, someone's going to be crazy enough to check whether it actually disables. Who's going to check when you turn off the telemetry on Apple or Windows? You can't. You just can't. Like, there's no way. Opt in rather than opt out. On top of that, you have the ability to turn some telemetry on in KDE settings but it's entirely optional and disabled by default in most, if not all KDE using distros. Gnome also has a telemetry tool that you have to install manually and run yourself if you want to send them any usage data. Apart from that, I have never heard of a distro that collects data in the background and doesn't inform you, apart from maybe the download numbers from the download button from a website, but these are just metrics, they don't know who downloaded what, or the amount of installs on Flathub, for example. But again, it's just a counter, it doesn't store personal information. So, in short, if privacy is important to you, you only have one real choice, one and choice. it's a Linux distribution. Every other operating system will, by default, have this telemetry is... enabled. Now, whether telemetry is... There's just no other choice. There's no other choice. Now